call this meeting of the Christiansburg Town Council to order, and as we always do, let's uh, please join a moment of reflection for events of the week, events of the future, plans and family and everything else. So we'll take about a minute to reflect. Please join us in the pledge to the flag. I'm going to ask soon retiring council in Fort Hall to pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Are there any adjustments or amendments to the agenda? You have none? Okay. Um, first and foremost, I would like to uh, congratulate Mr. Stipes and Mr. Huppert on their successful re-election to the seat. We welcome, we will miss Cord when he goes off at the end of the year, Marissa Sachs. Uh, we are our newest council member. She is unable to attend and I need her help. But anyway, we would like to congratulate these guys on Jobs well done. And Mr. Barber, we would like to uh, congratulate you two on one year. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Look forward four to it. Yeah. You have me another four years when you want me or not? Okay. <laughs> so there are no adjustments or amendments. Uh, we have a public hearing uh, conditional use permit request by Linda S. McMurray, agent for J and E Incorporated for a kennel, animal daycare overnight boarding at 569 North Franklin Street in the B3 General Commercial District. The property is, de is designated as business commercial on the future land use map, 2013 Christiansburg Comprehensive Plan. Is there anyone here to address this? Yes. If you would uh, name and address, and if you'd like to come to the podium, or if your voice carries, you may. Okay, uh, my name is Linda McMurray. And the address of the business is 569 North Franklin Street, Christiansburg. Um, and so just to clarify what, what's happening, um, currently we, we just opened yesterday just for pet retail and dog grooming. Um, and I guess while we're here is because we're hoping to add a dog daycare and overnight boarding. So we wanted to convert the greenhouse into a building um, for the dogs to be able to inside and have this fenced-in areas separating large and big dogs and they could be there during the day and eventually go on to do some overnight boarding. Thank you. I have a quick, how many dogs do you plan on keeping there? Um, okay, so we have um, some standards and guidelines that I have written and what we're going to do is allow for five by four square foot, so it's a 20 square foot space for each dog um, if they're going to be boarding. And um, on the interior, as far as this, is, it's going to be an open play for daycare, so we're going to limit the numbers. Um, and I, I can't really give you the exact number on that, but they, they're going to have plenty of space to move around in. It's not going to be, you know, they're going to be able to room and play and hang out in there and uh, be able to go outside on their own in the fenced-in areas with supervision. We'll have a supervisor or a you know, a person on the dog daycare constantly. We won't be out of our supervision at all. Okay, you can keep dogs overnight also? So we are looking for that. We're hoping to do that. Yes, sir. i tell you, over the years, I've, when I've been campaigning going door to door, it seems like every door I go to, they have a dog. <laughs> and if they don't have, one house doesn't have a dog, the next house has two. So I think there's definitely a need for that. And um, Christopher has to be a home of dog lovers. Thank you, Steve. Any, any other questions for Ms. McMurray? Thank you. Does anyone else like to address this issue? 
Um, I live at 1395 Dell Street. And your and name is? Desiree Spindell. Thank you. Um, I'm very excited about the dog daycare. I plan to take my dogs there as well. I have two, and um, I know that they love it. And we definitely need something like this. We don't even have a dog park, so yep. this would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any, any questions? Anyone else? I have a question for Mrs. Swindell, I believe. Yes. Just real quickly, uh, uh, you mentioned, I think Steve kind of hit the nail on the head, but you mentioned that uh, you will be utilizing the services that could be offered close by. What do you do right now? Um, with my dogs? Yes. Uh, we do the Huckleberry a lot. No, I'm sorry. What, do, you, what, do you have to board them or if you have to take them somewhere? I mean, how far do you have to drive or what's the closest place in proximity? Um, we go to the dog park in Radford, so that's a 20-minute drive to go there. Mm -hmm. Um, boarding, I actually, one of my friends keeps them for me. She also lives in Radford, so okay. I have to drive there. Um, so they, there's really not a lot. Sometimes we take them to Blacksburg. That's even farther to go to the dog park. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I need to address his question. Um, I also, Your name? I'm sorry, Farron, F-A-R-E-N, and my last name's Walter, W-O-L-T-E-R. I also happen to live on Dell Street and have dogs. Um, when I do board mine or overnight night mine or take them to doggy daycare, I have to go all the way to Newport. That's one of the closest facilities that does doggy daycare that is a, a good place to board. So, yes, having a place in Christiansburg would be lovely. Thank you. Anyone else? Close this public hearing. Uh, we move into the consent agenda. Council meeting minutes for October the 24th, 2017. <coughs> Resolution recognizing Todd Walters for his service to the town of Christiansburg. We need to schedule a public hearing on January the 9th, 2018 for a conditional use permit request by Walmart Real Estate and Trust for a comprehensive sign plan for additional signage to Walmart <coughs> Supercenter and an online grocery pickup service at 2400 North Franklin Street in the B3 General Commercial District. Property is designated as business commercial future land use map 2013 Christiansburg Comprehensive Plan. Move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. second. A motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Madam Clark? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hubbard? Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Sykes. Aye. Okay, 6-0, thank you very much. Next is our citizens comments section where you can bring issues and concerns to the town council. Uh, please, as in the public hearing, give us your name, your address, limit your comments to five minutes. <coughs> thank you. How are you? My name is Ann Shack. I temporarily live with my parents at 1391 Dow Street. Most of this is Dow Street. Uh, we recently ran into an issue with uh, a man that lives at 1392 Dow Street that's running an illegal kennel. Uh, we'd like to say that Andrew Warren has been on top of his game, and I praise him for doing a fine job in zoning and finding the violation and, and citation, giving the citation to that residence. And keep this short and sweet. Uh, one thing I think Christiansburg's behind on is the ordinances. One is the noise ordinance, especially when it comes to barking dogs. I know you just had that starlight issue. A um, couple of things I want to address from 1392 is the excessive barking that goes on. We've had at least, I guess, approximately 80 to 100 complaints from that resident, not just from myself, but thousands. The other thing is dogs running at large. Uh, I do have some complaints in the past. This was from animal control. The dogs running at large. Not only are they running at large, but Robert, raise your hand. Robert and his family uh, were attacked by four German shepherds from this residence. Uh, so it's becoming serious. And we've got to do something. The other thing we have is the smell of feces. This residence, last time they checked, had 18 dogs in a three-bedroom house. Uh, and I have pictures I'd like to pass around just so you have an idea of what the residents of Dow Street is dealing with. 
Mr. Stack, may I ask you a question? Yes, sir. May or may I speak, ask a question in the middle of the presentation? Certainly. This is not related to the request for the doggy daycare. No, I, 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 actually, <laughs> I actually think that is wonderful. Okay. Yeah. I believe. I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt, but no, I no. To answer. Hey, this is. I'm all okay. Is it coincidentally? Same yeah. story. Look at the girl. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Thank you. I, 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 everybody on Dow Street has a dog. We okay. all love dogs. Okay. And I praise her for putting it okay. in business. You can zone. continue, but I want to make that clarification. I want to share. Okay. Um, we also have seen different dogs coming and going from that residence as if he is boarding. And uh, we know that he is trying to sell some of these dogs on Craigslist because he, uh, he had an ID number up there, but since he appealed the zoning, he has pulled this thing from Craigslist. But uh, yeah, she has evidence to show that he had been selling them on Craigslist. So he's also selling the dogs from 1392 Dow Street. The other issue is the trash and, and the building supplies that is around the house. He, he's got a, a wooden fence, as you can see in that picture. At uh, the last storm, we had blew over the fence and, and of course, issues. So what we're asking for, and I have Salem's ordinance. Bradford, Town of Blacksburg, and I'm going to give you all their ordinances so you can come up with some ideas on how we can create new ones and more, more importantly is to enforce them. Because we, we definitely have a problem on Dow Street. Okay. Can I ask another question, Mr. Shane? If he's done, are you done? Sure, I'm not. Whatever. Are you going to entertain questions? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, how long is this? How long is, have, have you been working with our staff on this? Has it been a week, a month, a year? I've been working primarily with Andrew. Right, right. Uh, it's probably been a good, probably a good solid month. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. That's, okay. Okay. That's definitely. Uh, here is the uh, petition. Twenty-seven families signed it. And, and a lot of people weren't home at the time, so I couldn't get everybody's signature, but I'm sure they'll jump on board. Uh, one thing that Christiansburg doesn't have is, uh, that's the city of Salem's dogs. That's Radford and that's Blacksburg. One thing uh, we don't want is a puppy mill. You know, society is already overpopulated with cats and dogs. And we have shelters plumb full. We have a beautiful, probably the best animal shelter in Montgomery County here, full of animals waiting for adoption. So I don't, you know, we need not to have a puppy mill either in town of Christiansburg. Mr. Shack, the uh, photos that you provide the council that we've been able to look at, uh, when were they taken? Oh, approximately a week ago. Okay. And um, how long has the, has the Franklin the nuisance been present? A year and a half. A year and a half, a while. And, <clears throat> and just for, I think Mr. Sipes had asked you, you said you, but thus far, you, you said that you've had good involvement with the town. The town's been responsive and they've been receptive. Mr. Warren specifically has been the contact person, I believe. Right. Um, and uh, so has town been out there to see this or to speak with you about this? The town has, the police department has, and animal control has. Oh, yes. This is the uh, couple of violations. Now, the uh, incident with Robert is not with those complaints, but there has been several I know animal control has been out there at least two more times since those complaints and have cited them. And Christian Park Police Department has cited them for three counts of noise. Now, has anybody been cited, to the best of your knowledge, for neglect? That or I abuse? do not know, Mr. Ford uh, Hall. Uh, uh, so how's the home owner 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 occupied? It is, okay. Yeah, that's the difference. Now, I did have a sit-down meeting with Judge uh, Gina Williams today for about a good 20 minutes. And I said, Gina, looking at the Christiansburg Town Orange, you know, right now I think the Christiansburg Police have to go out there and make sure that the door balls one time per minute for 10 minutes. Gina, the judge even said that's ridiculous because that, what that's saying is that a dog can ball for eight minutes, be quiet for two, and we have to start all over for another 10 minutes. So basically, you're opening the door that these dogs can just continuously bark. He looked over the Salem and Blacksburg corners as far as where it becomes a common nuisance, and he agreed that's fine.
but he also said the best way to handle a situation with this magnitude of complaints is to go to the Commonwealth Attorney, have Chrisburg PD go to Commonwealth Attorney, and do a thing called an in-panel special grand jury, which I've never heard of it. I've been doing police work now 20 years, never heard of it. You might have been a lawyer. But he said you can do that, and what that does is it fast tracks the complaint of the nuisance, the noise, straight to circuit court. And it doesn't allow him to appeal it and buy time, just like he appealed the zoning, and all he's doing is buying time, because he's in violation. <coughs> Uh, sure. Judge, Judge Williams is a fine attorney. We have we have a pretty fine attorneys here. Oh, I'm yeah. sure that we will work on. Oh on yeah, Judge, Judge Williams is he works in Montgomery County and Giles County. So he's been cited, but that that hasn't gone any farther than that. No, he he said an appeal, which all of us plan on attending the appeal. We're just waiting on notification. Very good. <coughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Any more questions? Anyone else like to address this issue? Yes, ma'am. And your name again was, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I had to that's not. My first name's Farron, F-A-R-E-N, and my last name's Walter, W-O-L-T-E-R. And I live at 1370 Dow, which is directly behind this individual. Um, in addition to what he was saying, um, and I, I think he's addressed a lot of this with the kennel issue, um, this individual's been kind of clever um, and kind of looking at how we just have a broad, kind of a vague kennel definition versus having a commercial and or a private difference kind of a designation. Um, he's also been clever in the Craigslist ad not to purposely put a price tag of a puppy, um, but to word it in such a way and then to have like contact this person. And I know that they bred two litters and we're selling two litters this summer. so. It's a little bit, from a legal perspective, a little bit slippery on trying to kind of box this kind of situation in. Um, we don't want to penalize responsible dog owners. I mean, we have people in our neighborhood that have multiple dogs. Um, one neighbor who lives adjacent to him is actually a nationally recognized judge. They travel all over the country competing their dogs. They have multiple dogs, um, but you wouldn't know it. I mean, the yard is not an issue. The noise is not an issue. So. We, want, we do are concerned and we want to be careful that we don't penalize good residents and good neighbors that have lots of dogs and are responsible, but we do have to work out something that's um, for these wily critters, these, these individuals who will look for every loophole and every way to kind of stretch that. Um, whether that's the noise ordinance, whether that's a kennel issue, whether that's soil erosion, waste disposal, I, I don't know the mechanism or multiple mechanisms to make that happen. Um, but it is a property value issue for us as well. I mean, if any of us try to sell our homes, who wants to buy a house next door to somebody that's got 15 dogs and four double run kennels outside in their yard? I mean, that's not great. <laughs> and we just frankly want to sit outside and have a glass of wine and watch the sunset in peace. We, you know, we all have dogs. We know dogs bark. That's not, it's not a barking dog that's the issue. Um, it's the sheer number, um, and when you have, when you're constantly bringing in new dogs into a new environment, they are going to bark because they're unaware of their surroundings. So this constant turnover of new dogs of varying ages and breeds is part of the concern because the dogs never really settle in for it to be home, and so they never quiet down. So that's part of you know the challenge. Um, and for I think there was a question about. Uh, welfare or something of like that. Again, a gap. Animal control, the only thing that they're mandated to do is make sure there's food, water, and shelter to within a certain degree. Their hands are sort of tied, legally speaking, on what they can address. Um, and so um, this individual has also taken it upon itself to now make call the police department and animal control and make false claims against myself and others saying, terrible things that we're doing to our own dogs, trying again to you know, retaliate to the point where I've had to put up video cameras on my property just so I have time and date stamp footage to prove that I'm not out there choking my dog out or beating my dog in the yard, which is just insane, but it's nonetheless just to defend myself. Because it becomes he said, she said. Every time somebody calls with the barking dog, well, they're barking, but now they're quiet. The police department has better things to be doing in their day and their night than sitting in our neighborhood in a cruiser and just waiting and counting minutes to see when dogs bark. I mean, it's just, it's not realistic. Um, you so. all seen, uh, 
uh, just from what I was reading, um, an influx of, of, of animals. I understand one thing that they're, they're, they're being bred or there's a, a litter or two that are on site, but you're seeing new dogs? Yeah, so over the course of the year and a half, so when I bought the property, he was not in the picture. It was just the woman and her. But that's specifically, you're seeing new dogs, though, that are Yeah, over on the, the property. course of a year and a half. There are a couple that are kind of the core group that are there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have seen both in pit bulls and in German shepherds, um, also in some little dog. I don't know. I'm not much on little dog breeds, so I don't know what they are. Um, but over the course of time, um, there is a change. I mean, it's it's hard to tell. It's a constant shifting. Yes, there are a couple that are core, but there have been also additional dogs just showing up and then being gone again. Um, to never be seen. So whether they're buying and selling dogs on Craigslist or I don't know, I don't know what they're doing. At one point they told me they were operating as, because I would go over there in the middle of the night and bang on the door and be like, can you please bring the dogs inside? And they'd be like, well, we just rescued this dog and we can't have it, it tried to bite our kid or something. We can't have it in the house, so we can't come in. So at one point they're saying, oh, we're operating as a rescue. Well, you're supposed to be registered with animal control if you're actually operating as a rescue, my understanding, which they're not. <clears throat> then it became, well, we're not really breeding for money, <clears throat> but yet we're seeing the ads on, on Craigslist, but with cleverly, without a price tag value in the description of the ad, just contact this individual about these AKC German Shepherd puppies. Um, He's also breeding, and I know, and myself, the other neighbor who's the National Dog Show judge, um, we had talked to him early on, because we've tried just talking to him. I have a significant background in training. In training dogs, I've trained IED detection dogs for the Marine Corps U, so I have a lot of experience training dogs. And so, in between myself and the other neighbor, we've tried to address some behaviors and offer some, some suggestions, offer some trainers in the area that he could work with. His position is his dogs his property, they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And that's kind of the end of the story for him. Um, but those of one of those litters were brother and sisters. So earlier in the year, he had gotten two or three litter mates, and I was talking with him about it over the fence and his wife. This is before he put up the privacy fence. And I asked if he was gonna have these dogs spayed, because they're all litter mates. He said, no, he said, well, I don't believe in spaying dogs. I grew up and it's never a problem. I said, yeah, but these, when these dogs come into season, they don't care that they're litter mates. They dogs don't get that. They're gonna breed no matter what. Um, and he's like, no, that won't happen, that won't happen. Um, it happened, I saw it, neighbor saw it, we saw the breeding take place. And sure enough, within 60 days, well, I, think, well, I think you, you answered my, my question was just that you see yeah. new dogs coming in. You've answered uh -huh. that. So. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're getting pretty close on to your five minutes. Yes, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> I, I teach. I have a tendency to talk, so I apologize. <laughs> I, know, I have a lawyer beside me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> 25 more days. I know. <laughs> is, there, uh, is there anyone else here that would like to... Uh, address this issue or have other concerns that have not been mentioned before? Yes, sir. My name is Ed Shack. I live at 1392 Dow Street, basically almost across the street from uh, 1391. Uh, as been said, he really plays the system. And myself and another neighbor uh, noticed, and I have a scanner at, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a scanner at home because I have two sons in law enforcement. I like to listen to that. Uh, but if I call in a complaint on a dog's barking, within three to five minutes, those dogs are all taken into the house. And we guarantee that he's, he's listening to the scanners so that when the police department does come by, the officers do a drive-by, they'll slow down, there's nothing going on. He waits like a half an hour, the dogs are back out. And those dogs will start barking, we get up early in the morning, anywhere from six o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. Now, since he's had this uh, court hearing coming up, he's kind of really watches P's and Q's what's going on with the dogs. The other thing is, he uh, any movement of dogs is going on at night. Uh, he is really careful when he brings dogs in and takes dogs out. In fact, if you look at one of the pictures, I think if you look at the front of his house, there may even be a table saw still out there. He makes these little boxes out of wood and we believe that that's how he's transporting these dogs in and out of the, of the neighborhood and, and his premises. 
the last thing, which really isn't a dog issue, but it has to do with his property. He took, which I call a stockade fence, the six foot stockade fence, and attached it to a chain link fence, a four foot fence. No posts holding it up, nothing, it's just standing there. I have no idea how he has it connected, but I can see there's no posts on it, okay? I did call the town and I spoke with Jerry, and I can't remember Jerry's last name, I'm sorry, uh, but he said he was gonna go out and take a look. So he went out and took a look, gave me a call back, and he said, to my surprise, with all the ordinances we have, there's no ordinance on fences. You can just take it and nail it to a tree, I guess, and it's okay. So, and that itself created a hazard to the adjoining neighbors, uh, because we haven't had a big storm and half the fence fell down the other day, and he had to go back out there and stand it back up. And it's still blocking my property. Right, so, you know, side. that's an issue, a different issue, but something maybe town council would like to look into. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. My name is Robert Ambler, 365 Park Raider Street. It's on the corner of Park Raider and Dow. About two, three months ago, uh, I took one of my small dogs, Pomeranian, out into the yard, and uh, there was a pack of four German Shepherds coming through the yard adjacent to us. My dog saw it start barking. Well, the dogs came into the yard and started for my Pomeranian, which I called it back up to the deck. Uh, they started chasing him. At the time he hit the bottom step, he slipped and didn't come up the steps. And all four German Shepherds were within two feet of him going at him. Um, I started down the steps, they backed off. They went out in the yard a little bit. And so to get rid of them, because they wouldn't leave, they were just staying there, I went to get the garden hose, which is kind of down around the deck. And when I turned, two of the German Shepherds came at me. I turned back around to see what was going on, they stopped. So I turned quickly again and got the garden hose, got turned on. When I turned back around, the two were coming at me again. So that's when I started spraying with water and they left and stayed away. I stayed out there and watched. And the wife, who can't be here, she was she's coming in from Richmond right now. Uh, she went in and called uh, the police. And um, I stayed and watched. And I watched the dogs run from the property, outside the property, over into the next neighborhood, back over, they go off another direction and back, they, they go back and forth. Um, I guess somewhere, something like about 10, 15 minutes, I see a car speed up Dow Street and I didn't see it exit, so I, could, I can tell the traffic. I'm disabled, so on disability, so I'm there all the time. So anyway, the car stopped and I didn't see the dogs anymore. So I knew that they'd come and got the dogs. Well, I saw a police officer go around, so I went over and talked to him when he came around the street. And he said that he was just going through, checking on the call, that the dog, uh, dog warden, dog, uh, dog catcher, was coming. And it was at least better than a half hour before they showed up. The officer was roughly about 20 minutes after we called in. Uh, you can still constantly hear the dogs barking wife remarks how you know it's just a constant thing down there listening to the dogs now <coughs> it's not the first time i've seen that family chasing their dogs mm -hmm. I, I i don't know like how many might be loose but you can always see the kids running around with lead they'll run over into the neighborhood off to one side they'll come up through all the houses and i know they're looking for the dogs sometimes i see them catch them and then bring them back uh and that's been over the period of I guess the year through the summer at least anyway spring and summer i've seen a lot of this and like I say my incident was two or three months ago and since then it's kind of all been i haven't seen them loose but then again with everything going on now i guess they're being a little more cautious about it but still if, if they can't control you know four dogs getting out and and it only takes one to attack somebody this time it was an adult if it had been a child, there we'd be. <coughs> so that's my feeling on it. Thank you. Can I get your last name, sir? Your last name, I just could. Ambler, A-M-B-L-E-R. Thank you. 
Anyone else? I'd like to ask. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Finish on that. If you're going, I'd like to ask. I'd like to ask a question. Uh, would you please raise your hand if you are here with a concern on this issue? <clears throat> okay, I talked to a few people before the meeting. I, I would like to thank you for taking time to show up and bringing this to our attention and validating the concerns because uh, it's, uh, this is obviously a, a big deal and I appreciate you taking time to show up this evening. Mike, it, would it be all right if we can hear something from staff? I mean, if, it, if not, where we are and where we intend to go with this? They, they have been cited with a zoning violation. They have appealed that to the Board of Zoning Appeals, that determination that they're in violation. They basically, by state law, they have that right to appeal to the Board of Zoning Appeals. When's that hearing scheduled? Yeah, when is that hearing scheduled? It's scheduled towards the end of November, beginning of December. We'll finalize that with the, um, basically need to ensure that we have a quorum of our Board of Zoning Appeal members. So we'll be getting that finalized in the next couple of days. And, uh, and then uh, with a, uh, an appeal, the, uh, the adjacent property owners would be notified and then the sign would be posted on the property as well. Uh, and so there would be uh, notification uh, of that. And, and I'll make sure that I get that, uh, that information to those that are contacting me as well. And that won't happen until there's a court, an actual, uh, sorry, BZA appeal date though, correct? Because that'll look about what we go on the sign. When was the, uh, just for what it's worth, when was the appeal uh, noted? Just to give me an idea as to when an appeals note as to when we can get a quorum of our BZA. As far as it was uh, last week. So it was last week? Okay. And you'll let council know when that meeting is. Mm -hmm. And I'd also recommend that the people that took time to show up are, made, are, are made aware of when that meeting is. And I'd also encourage them likewise to take time to show up. Sure. All adjoining properties <coughs> will get a notice and that will include across streets. Okay. So that would include everyone here then? Well, most part. not necessarily, yeah. but I've got a feeling they're probably going to know about it. I just encourage them to contact uh, Mr. Warren or Mr. Uh, Wingfield and, and let them know that you want to be notified when that hearing is. And, and there are other um, items that are also taking place. There's a summons uh, for noise violations that, uh, that will take place at the beginning of the court data set for the beginning of January. Um, and then uh, there has been a letter sent by the building official regarding the fence as well. Uh, so that, that is, is kind of uh, working its way uh, through, through the process as well. Um, the other item is that the animal officer for Montgomery County has cited them with certain uh, items that they can regarding shelter. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and I think some have been corrected and some they're still working. I think I saw that, if I was reading correctly, they gave them basically about a two-week uh, window of opportunity to remedy any wrongs that could potentially prove liable for the property owner in which he was able to remedy apparently. Um, one other last thing Mr. Warren, uh, with the um, uh, citizens here with what we've heard, um, let's be honest, we don't pay a whole lot of attention to certain things that don't come up very often. This is one of those things that doesn't come up. They don't know about it unless you come. And that's why again Brad spoke very truly. I appreciate you being here. It uh, helps to highlight issues. Is this something that we need to be looking at um, from an ordinance standpoint to see why, if we're lacking in an opportunity to be able to, again, look at it from two perspectives. It's public safety, yes, but it's also animal safety. And so if there's a way in which that we can um, revamp. I think there's an opportunity to look good. at our definition of kennel. Very especially good. Uh, with, the, with the way that it's written, there's an opportunity that, that it could be exploited where you have uh, four adult dogs, plus you, know, you could have an unlimited number of dogs that are up to a year in age, mm -hmm. so we could tighten um, uh, tighten the definition some uh, in order to, to eliminate that, the possibility of having an unlimited amount of dogs that may have the same impact because I think uh, most people would agree that a 10 month old uh, dog has the same impact as a, a 14 month old dog would. So I, I do think some arbitrary some time frames basically yeah. that might be within our statute or our ordinance. Mm -hmm. Very good. good. To go over that again, you could have an unlimited an unlimited number of dogs in your house if they are under age, I guess that is, and maybe, and how many adults can you have? Or? That's the puppy relationship. It, it would be four, four adult dogs. Four adult dogs. And, and, or, and or cats. And or cats, okay. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Mr. Warren, thank you. Thank you. And I would hope that in the future we could look at this in the, recent, in the near future. In the next 45 days? Yes. <laughs> I got it scheduled for the 46th day, Corey. <laughs>
Okay, is there anyone else to address council on any other matter? Step away from the table again just to bring you an update on the Arts Council, Marty Gordon, 1470 Marion Mack Road, uh, and the Christian Arts Council. We met, and I know a lot of you have showed some interest in it, and we're at the first meeting. And I apologize that our last meeting that we had was, or held, was the same night as the council forum, but uh, both Andrew and Randy were able to come to it. Um, we recently met and took the organization of the group to the next level. We'll be seeking nominations for a chair, vice chair, and a public information slash marketing person in the next few months. Uh, and we were encouraged by what the discussion went on that we're going to try to come up with a Facebook page, hopefully in the next two weeks, and start requesting both artists to contact us through that page, not only in just Christianburg, but outside the area. And we're going to establish an arts calendar for the town of Christiansburg. So this Facebook page would be phase one of places that people could go and, and see all forms of arts on the calendar. And it would also, and, and one of the big things in this organization is bringing these people together. It will also give them the opportunity to make sure we don't have events going head to head. Uh, with a lot of the things that are going on now, it's happened in the past, including the Gospel <coughs> Festival and and a festival last year with the museum. This type of situation, everyone was excited about it because it could be a calendar they could refer to to uh, look to see if there was another event going on so they could reschedule their event. Because the main objective is we do more arts in, in the arts area here in Christiansburg. It's not to go head to head, but to increase it and, and, and do more of that. Uh, the process of assembling an inventory of public and private properties within a four block radius of the downtown has begun. We'll be asking for the public's input over the next 90 days. This inventory will start with the Main Street, the Roanoke Street, and Bradford Road within that four block radius. Now this is just the start. Uh, we hope it's the beginning point for what could be a townwide effort in the near future. But what it will do will identify both private and public spots that we could look to place some form of art. Not saying we will. And that's the, the big thing to say to the property owners. Not saying that it will happen, but it could happen and would you be open to it. Um, by doing this, hope we can encourage more public art. What you saw was unveiled down at the, the Old Town uh, Mall. That has been so exciting. I've spent a couple of days down there and the people coming through town that are stopping, get their picture taken with it. And what the, the Old Town Mall property owners have seen over the last month since it's unveiled they're getting visitors. So there's been informal, uh, informal conversation with myself and them in the last week, and we're going to continue it to see what they can do to decorate the old town mall, to bring art to it, to put photo displays, to put murals, and to put uh, photos of the downtown Christiansburg. Because they want that mall area to now to be an art area, and as people come in, it's a great opportunity to put things from the town. Now, in the last two days, that has also expanded in conversation with a lot of the business people down there, including the ones next door in the Alcorn building. They're getting ready to uh, look at what they can do to their lobby area that goes between all the businesses in that area. Uh, that is currently open during local business hours, I mean, during business hours, and that could be another possibility for our work. Uh, the pet memorial that uh, had been talked about, the art memorial started on the building along Roanoke Street facing Hardy's. The first pet went up last month. And there could be a public announcement by the first of the year. The, the monies that are collected for that, the plan is that it will go to MECAP, the Montgomery County Emergency Planning, or the planning Program. And any money that comes in for that will go to them, and that will also help them as a nonprofit. I hope you saw some of the media coverage on Blacksburg's two new public art efforts, including the one that was introduced yesterday. And I hope that we can come up with something similar next year. The, the Blacksburg Frog Project, that's the latest one to get exposure. That's based on the original 16 square formation of the town. And uh, it was interesting to learn more about at one time that there were swampy areas in that area of Blacksburg. And there were frogs, so they came up with using the frogs. Of course, they have the hokey bird, too. But the big one they announced is the same one that was announced in Roanoke on Monday, and I don't know if you saw, if you saw the TV coverage on this. But the town of Blacksburg is launching a public art project centered on local water quality and water heritage. Modeled after successful programs in Richmond, 
Blacksburg seeking to design concepts from local artists to adorn selected storm drains around town with the mission to raise awareness of that, about choices that we can make to restore the health of all our local waterways. Can you imagine how many storm drains are in Christiansburg and Blacksburg? And they're literally in the downtown area of Blacksburg going to have an artist uh, put public art on that. And it'll be not just one artist, but they hope to have many. Uh, artists 18 and up are invited to do that. And of course, it's, it's all based on the watershed and, and, you know, the idea of stuff, bad stuff that goes down in it that people realize what's going on in it. Uh, in addition, again, I informally discussed the possibility of public art and photo displays, not only in the businesses I mentioned, and we hope we can make some announcement on that in the very near future. So I'm very excited of what's getting ready to happen with the Arts Council and what some of the projects that, like you talked about in the work session, that maybe we can be involved with. Uh, Charlie Whitescarver, a local photographer, of course, opened a studio in downtown Christiansburg, and he's very excited. He's doing a lot of local projects. He's getting ready to announce one that he worked out today that will all be based around uh, the idea of public art. Mr. Gordon, you got a lot of people in the audience today. If they want more information on the Arts Council and, and what's kind of on the, uh, uh, on the calendar uh, going forward, how would they get more information? And contact me at 257-1149, but also check out Facebook. Hopefully in the next two weeks we will have the Christianburg Arts Council Facebook page up and running. Is that what it, is what it would be called, Christianburg Arts Christianburg, Council? Christiansburg. Virginia Arts Council. Yeah. Right. Because as of yesterday, there is a Christiansburg, Ohio arts page on Facebook. And I'll be bringing you information back on the sister city, hopefully at your next meeting, uh, with some information. Of course, and I, I pat uh, Mr. Wingfield on the back. Uh, we're waiting on word, but the town officially, through his office, sent uh, Christiansburg, Ohio, two dogwood trees to be planted in Christianburg, Ohio, through the Arbor Foundation. And they told me they would let either you or my, myself know that maybe we can go up and help with the digging, but they hope to plant those very soon. And there will be a sign out there that says, from Christiansburg, Virginia, in Christianburg, Ohio's downtown. Very good. Marty, a uh, question here. Is there an art uh, presentation coming up in February in downtown Christiansburg? There's a couple of things in the works yeah, that will be okay. separate than, from uh, the Arts work. Council, but there's one with the Montgomery <coughs> County uh, Museum yeah. along with uh, Ignite. Yes, Ignite has their art uh, gallery ready to open, uh -huh. and there is an art exhibit in it, and they plan to be open during uh, the Christmas parade and the downtown market. <coughs> You're good. Thank you. And Ignite is that old, the old Baptist church, and the man in charge of that, Mike Morgan, is really into this. And I think you're going to see a lot of exciting things down there. Thank you. Anyone else to address council? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor and Town Council, my name is Christopher Sweet. I live on um, Gold Drive, 500 Gold Drive in Christiansburg. Um, I am 13 years old. I'm in the seventh grade. And in Christiansburg, I'm the, I was a football team manager. I'm in Boy Scout to 348. I'm a tenderfoot right now. I'm also in the Big Brother and Big Sister program along with the Boys and Girls Club. I know we have the Aquatic Center and the Rec. You have um, festivals in town for adults and younger kids. Why can't we also have something for preteens and teens? Because we have nothing to do. For example, a Pinewood Derby Festival or an indoor pup club or RC remote control track. This can be something for the preteens and teens to enjoy. Please take this to consideration for the preteens and teens. We need more for us to do. Thank you for allowing me to present this at your meeting. Mr. Sweet, I've got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, the Pinewood Derby, I'm somewhat familiar with that. Obviously, that's where you, you construct and you make. Like this? Yes, that, I was going to say, you got one hand. Is a. Is there a, a lot of young people that are very involved and, and, and enthusiastic about the Pinewood Derbies? And um, only um, Boy Scouts are. Right, but I take it there's a lot of Boy Scouts in the area. Where do you all go right now when you have your the big events like that? Um, right now, we're, I'm going to talk to one of my scout leaders and, very good. and talk about, ask them if we can do Pinewood Derbies again. May I ask you a favor? Yes, sir. Um, in the next 45 days. <laughs> 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 
I, no, I, 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 I want to. It takes a lot of guts to get up here and talk to us, and I really appreciate that. I, that speaks. You speak very well. You're very articulate, and you're very passionate about what you're talking about. I think that deserves our respect. Um, and I would love to if you could maybe talk with your uh, uh, troop leader um, and maybe get some information and see what we can do to help out with that. Uh, maybe even either on from a town level or just on a personal level. Um, is that's you're right. We we tend to we cater a lot of things to the people that have a bigger voice. And sometimes your preteens don't quite have a voice as loud as the rest of us. Like mayor has a louder voice than I do, so I get to get around that. Sometimes. But I get to use it. <laughs> but uh, but if you could do that, maybe if you wouldn't mind coming back and letting us know, maybe at the next meeting or the first meeting, perhaps in December, and let us know what we can do. I think that would be a fantastic event that we can get behind. I think that's a great. Uh, and you said you're involved with the Big Brothers Big Sisters as well. How long have you been involved with that organization? This is my second year being in it. Do you enjoy that? Yes, sir. All right. You, you said Troop 348. Is that out of Ryder? That's in Ryder, Virginia. Yeah, I was at a, a presentation the other night, and they recognized four Eagle Scouts from that troop in Roanoke just just this past weekend. So yeah, uh, I, I I would think you know probably through through the uh, if nothing more through the recreation department Absolutely. as far as a site to hold those those derbies. So anyway, yeah, that's it's, can that's I ask good you one stuff. question too as well? If we get a committee up, would you join us? <laughs> would you? Okay, good. Thanks, bud. Yes, please. You know, we are. I've, I've, we're yeah. on <laughs> hey, Steve. Steve. Hey, you got go. the most votes in an election. I'm going to let Steve say whatever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> Besides you, Mayor. <laughs> well, if we do, all our. Uh, admire how you spoke, came up here and spoke so well, and you can see we are talkers here to start with, so if we admire, admire what you're doing, that is something in itself, too. Now, concerning, I think one of the things that you were on your mind was more activities for teenagers. That's basically what you're talking about. Pre-teens. Pre-teens. And, Pre and that is a, uh, a big thing. And I'm not sure if you know this course that... Uh, of course, the, the Aquatic Center is going to have the big thing on uh, December 30th, uh, the uh, dropping the ball, and they have a lot of things for pre-teams during that thing, and you might want to check with the, the Aquatic Center. And also, you know, right now they're forming basketball teams over at the uh, Rec Center, and though those are for people that your age and things like that. So you Thank might want to look into that too. Thank you, Steve. Mr. Shaw. I've got two things, Mr. Sweet. Uh, I'm going to call out because I never get, we, we never get an opportunity like this, but you got two Eagle Scouts sitting on uh, our DS right here, and that's Mr. Stipes and Mr. Barber, um, local guys. But um, this, you know, Mr. Hall invited you back here to a more formal session, but uh, we do have advisory boards, the rec advisory board, which Mr. Hall sits on, but I don't think they're going to meet in December, are they? As of right now, we are. Oh, so First Monday of December. And Mr. Hubbard sits on the Aquatic Advisory Board, and um, they're a little bit more uh, or less formal than this, uh -huh. even though I appreciate you showing up. But if you could find out when they are, or we could get your information before you leave, uh, have staff reach out to him and, and tell you when those meetings are. It's uh, they're after school. Um, yeah, you'll have to deal with Mr. Hall though at the recognition. But uh, Steve will treat you right. With the water. But uh, I would encourage you to go talk to them and see what sort of activities that uh, is not a one-time um, thing that they can start to plan annually for free teams. Because I do see the point, and I do. I'm glad Steve brought that up. It's more than the derby. You're looking for things that uh, our free teams can do. Um, that's right. Uh, several times during the year. And that's why I'd like you for you to reach out to them and see what they can do for programming for you. Okay? And if you don't hear anything, I'm in there sure Walter, you can reach out to them. Thank you. Thank you. And I can tell you right now. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. Don't listen to that. We meet the first Wednesday of every month at 4 30 at the Aquatic Center. First Wednesday. If you can't find these boys, <laughs> your granddad knows how to get with them because we're in the house for All right, thank you. Uh, one more question, please. I see these two gentlemen sitting right here in the front row. They're the Christmas program. That's school. coming up. Yeah, I know. Uh, they're going to help you to fix this problem, too. Good, good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, run while you have a chance. <laughs> thank you. you good, appreciate, appreciate that.
Uh, is there anyone else to address council tonight? This may be the longest citizens' comment section we've ever had. Uh, so, if not, I'll close the citizens' comment. We go into introductions and presentations. Uh, Engineering Director Wayne Nelson to provide a presentation to council outlining the four transportation alternative funding projects submitted on November 4, 2017 to the, to the Virginia Department of Transportation. A public hearing is scheduled for November the 21st, 2017 at Town Hall from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. The public is invited to attend and provide comment in regards to these projects. A resolution in support of these projects will be uh, moved before town council at the November 28th council meeting. Mr. Nelson, you can't talk any of this. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Back about you know, the first part of September, we started brainstorming, compiling projects for the upcoming VDOT funding cycle this year. This year, they changed it up. It's for two years. We're applying for two years, FY19 and FY20. Took that list. We went to street committee. We talked with administration, planning, public works. We invited in the local VDOT residency engineers, and we invited the Salem district engineers to come down and meet with us. And we have uh, put together eight applications for for seven projects, four transportation alternative, uh, one HSIP bike bed, which is a highway uh, safety improvement program for bike and pedestrian accommodations and revenue sharing. The transportation alternative is 80-20 and the revenue sharing is 50-50. Is HSIP is 100%. Correct, correct. The four projects for transportation alternative funding is the Roanoke Street sidewalk uh, going under the bypass bridge, the East Main Street sidewalk project, downtown enhancement phase three, and what we call the Huckberry Trailhead. The Roanoke Street sidewalk under the under the bypass bridge will uh, begin at this. <coughs> It's the improvement shown in white. What is shown in blue is our current Roanoke Street Palm Branch intersection project. And we are picking up where that project ends and proposing to uh, provide sidewalk accommodations down to Hubble Drive across from the new park and ride. Uh, I want to point out a couple things here. Uh, we'll have uh, pedestrian signals at the ramps and at this slip ramp we would have a uh, rapid uh, flashing uh, warning uh, device to warn uh, the traveling public that there are pedestrians potentially in the, in the crosswalk. All these projects basically will we'll have Sidewalk, curb and gutter, and I won't bore everybody with that. Uh, the, uh, uh, I will point out that this, this project, we also concurrently apply for HSIP money. As Councilman Stipes pointed out, that is 100% funded. Uh, we, we tried to mix it up a little bit, uh, try to improve our odds for, for funding these projects. Next project is the East Main Street sidewalk project. It's, excuse me, it's very similar to the Park Street project that we are just completing. The sidewalk will be, would be extended on the east side of, of East Main Street from Park Street to uh, the High Street here. And 
get to would would involve poor sidewalk and curb and gutter, driveway entrances, storm drain piping. And in this case, we would, if funded, we would utilize our CDGB funding mm -hmm. to as as part of our match. And, and I believe this may have come up perhaps even at a forum that may have been done a couple of weeks ago, or, or at least the, the project mm -hmm. itself that's part of the Park Street project, Mr. Nelson, which, by the way, is beautiful, and it's safe. And that's, again, you put those things together, you can't ask for a better project. But if you wouldn't mind, the total cost to the taxpayers of Christianburg for the entire Park Street project was how much? The construction was in the 600000 mm -hmm. range. And how much did we pay as taxpayers on that? That, that was it's a little complicated. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, it was 50-50. It's a 50-50 match. But, but we use, we utilize the CDGB funds as our match. So we... Uh, I guess what I'm getting at is a net, of, net of zero is the way I, I see it, is that with, by utilizing CDBG funds for the Park Street project, that wasn't costing us a penny. That, that is not, that would be nice, but no, that no, is not the case. Not the way to look no, at that? We, we do have general fund okay. money. Uh, Very good. On that project. I don't think I pointed out the, the Roman Street was, excuse me, to write it, 800,000 for the total project cost. The East Main Street is a million thirty-five thousand. Next project is downtown enhancement phase three. This picks up the sidewalk improvements here at the post office. Comes up North Franklin Street to Depot and up to uh, Wage Lane and Kroger, tying in the sidewalk there. We would provide better pedestrian accommodation signals and crosswalks at the depot intersection. Uh, I would point out that uh, one of the challenges, and that's what they ask us to do when we scope these, is to identify the challenges. And this is a challenge right here. If you drive through there, you will see guardrail and, and railing not enough room for a sidewalk. So that box culvert that's uh, carrying town branch would need to be extended. This project here is uh, estimated at uh, 437000 Last but not least is Truck Huckleberry Trailhead. Uh, we decided that the Great Trail needed a starting point. We feel the high school was the right spot for it. So we have proposed a trail uh, extension down to Scattergood from Independence, a, a crossing here with a tent space parking lot on the Christiansburg Institute property. Ten foot wide asphalt trail. Pedestrian crossing with scatter good, another rapid flashing with beacon for that crossing, parking lot, and some signage to uh, bring recognition to Lockwood Trail. Estimated at just over five hundred thousand dollars for that project. Next are the revenue sharing projects. I'd like to bring these to your attention as well. First one is the Roanoke Street, Tower Road, Hampton Boulevard intersection improvements, the Arbor Drive, Pepper's Ferry Road intersection improvements, and then Pickard Street improvements. The Tower Road, uh, this, is our, <coughs> this is our number one project. The revenue sharing, you had, to, you had to list them order priority. We listed this as number one. It would involve a signal at the intersection with pedestrian accommodations and sidewalk extensions, kind of tie in the, the hotels and the restaurants that are down here. We also have some drainage improvements. There's runoff coming off Roanoke Street in the interstate, causing erosion problems downstream and some issues with a sewer. So we're proposing to remedy that 
was an issue as well. Project estimated 1.57 million. I've hit on all the highlights here. Mr. Nelson, the uh, of that 1.57 total for that project, yes, very necessary and worthwhile project. Uh, how much of that is signal related? A million? No. How much no. is that? Uh, probably in the 600,000. I will point out something to overlook. I-81 preemption, if there was a backup on the interstate, it would send a signal and it would uh, allow more I-81 traffic to access the top of the mountain down 460. That was uh, part of the uh, discussions with VDOT to allow a signal this close to limited access in the interstate. Uh, would you say it again, please, sir? Yes, sir. <coughs> it's it's uh, preemption. Yes, sir. In other words, if the traffic backed up to the point that uh, VDOT would have concerns that it would be backing up on the interstate, right. it would override the signal. It, it would turn green <coughs> to allow the traffic to uh, exit so the interstate. Okay, got it. Do you understand what preemption is? I do now. Yeah. Oh, it's like the yeah. fire trucks have it, too. Yeah. You know. But it will eventually give a break in the action so the people coming out of the intersections. I'm glad you brought that up. Sir. Okay. We would make sure that there would be an avenue for that to happen. Right. That it just wouldn't take over the signal. Yeah. Okay. More folks on the tower and Hampton Boulevard would be able to get out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Arbor Drive, Pepper Spray Road intersection. We've been up here at lunchtime know what a congested area this is. Mm -hmm. We also feel that this would help support redevelopment of the marketplace when that happens. Um, it will involve signal, uh, pedestrian signal and crosswalk here as well as here at the, the entrance. What we're doing is uh, we're adding we're adding a a dedicated left turn lane to get traffic onto the bypass and a dedicated right straight through the, of course the curb and gutter sidewalk and accessible ramps and crosswalks estimated at 1.48 million. This is the Hickok Street Improvement. This is uh, really a, a two-phase project but the biggest obstacle here is, is uh, rerouting of stormwater through the downtown area. This is part of our uh, study that's underway for the downtown drainage area. As you see in red here, this is underground system that currently, here at, at the back of that sidewalk, it opens up and discharges underneath these buildings. It comes out, goes underneath those into this building and comes out the other side to that cove. This project would pick that water up, come down Hickok, and tie into the system here, which would allow for redevelopment in this, this area downtown. We also envision that once this is done, we would be able to come back and make future improvements uh, for the farmer's market if it's that's the permanent location. <clears throat> Taking those overhead utilities, put them underground, wide, wide, wider sidewalks, uh, just make it more pedestrian friendly now. Estimated 2.68 million for that project. <coughs> When does that, that project, when, on, on the agenda, when when you plan to work on that? This is a funding application. Okay, uh, it's funding, okay. We, we will we'll know in the spring, May, May, approximately May, if it was funded. And again, it's a two-year cycle. So we're all trying to figure this out, uh, trying to play our cards best. To, uh, 
to see that our projects get in line with everyone else's. So what's on the horizon? I'll point out that uh, we have a public hearing for the transportation alternative projects here uh, next Tuesday evening, 4 to 6, right here in this room. That's a requirement for the funding application that we have a public hearing. I'll point out that we have a design public hearing for the North Franklin Street, Cambria Street intersection and corridor project. Mm -hmm. That's uh, this Thursday evening. This is a mistake. I apologize. It's 6 to 8 p.m. Marty. It too will be here in the council chambers. Next. Council meeting on the 28th, the support resolutions for the TA projects will be before, before council for approval. I'd like to point out that the uh, state of good repair, the primary extension paving, and the, and the bridge program, uh, those applications, that process has opened up and those applications are due January 31st by 5. Then the smart scale project application period opens March 1st and it closes August 1st. And we both, we, we plan to put projects in for both those programs. That concludes. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to do my best to answer. Well, the question I have is Nelson, now they're doing a two year instead of the one year? Yes. Does that, I mean, obviously it makes it more difficult because you have to look further and further into the future, but um, is that in any way any of the detriment of the town of Christiansburg? Is it problematic for us? Or? No, we we put our own steroids this year. Mm -hmm. We uh, we really get down into it. We'll be happy to share our CIP with you and how we uh, propose the finance fees should they, should they be funded. Well, one thing that's always my understanding, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I know you, I know you will if I'm wrong. But, um, <clears throat> the matching funds, and, and it's always important to be financially and fiscally, not just solvent, but really that we need to be in, in good standing because it used to be on a year-to-year -year basis. They would make sure to see if they were going to approve something. Basically, do we have the wherewithal to be able to match the reason trying to get something approved or if they're going to prove that we couldn't then utilize I guess now looking at it two years down the road, it makes that even more important because some of these projects wouldn't take effect until the 12 month period would pass, correct? That is correct. And I think the CIP is becoming more and more a valuable document here. Well, I guess my last time would be, I mean, you know, the guy that's in leadership, Mr. Tweedy, obviously Mr. Wingfield, but we are. Our fund balance is very appropriate and we're very, again, I, don't, I hate to use that word solvent, but we're in good standing right now. And so I think, again, this may, frankly, not just to our, not to our detriment, of course, but might be to our benefit because we do have, we are such a financially uh, stable, if you will, community um, that uh, we can look at things over a two-year period that other localities might have to really you know, take a second or third look at. I think it might help to help us out, frankly. There's so much detail here that I didn't share with you, but we took these projects and broke them down, and we'd look at engineering one year, and construction the following year, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> trying to, trying to have a consistent, somewhat consistent funding level from year to year going through the, through this process. They like, VDOT likes for you to have the project completed within three years. And I think we're, we're doing very well, especially with our smart scale project that's underway. I, I hope we're gaining some friends there. I'd like to make a statement <clears throat> to council. This is an opportune time. Wayne has no, no idea I'm going to say this, but I'm going to prepare council for something. Uh, those of us that will be here after the next 45 days anyway. <clears throat> um, no, I meant that in a good way for you. Uh, Wayne and the town have been making tremendous strides in seeking this funding. You saw those funding that's up there. All those projects have to be administered by the town of Christiansburg and Wayne there's a limit to how much his staff can handle right now. This is this is part of my day. You know, I understand the process, and and I fully expect 
that if we're successful with these, uh, that there is going to be a request for counsel so that he can have somebody um, to help administer these projects because the, the projects are not, they're time consuming. We do get a lot of money, a lot of other people's money to do these projects, <clears throat> but there's a limit to, uh, to how much, uh, he, 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 I think, I anticipate that he will need some help in that department. And the North of Franklin Street alone is a $9 million project, right? That is correct. <clears throat> and, and that's a lot of free money that's coming here, but we have, we're administering the project, and, and, uh, and those costs could be covered by these funding programs as well. So I just want to plan to see with councils that if we're successful in this and Wayne needs is going to scream uncle, um, um, be prepared for that. Uh, but the funding can be, uh, some of that funding can be recouped through the funding programs. Well, we'll get the, we should have our answers in the spring in time to yeah. budget. Yeah, no, I'm just, uh, I'm, this is great news. You see all this, see ten, five years ago, we weren't having these conversations. Right. Our Fiber. staff has gone out and been very aggressive to get this money, and we're doing great things with our stormwater and our transportation program. Mm -hmm. Most of the dollars are flowing in from outside of the town, but that all has to be administered and has to be managed by our staff. I'm just, just a little footnote to everybody. Take another thing yeah. that uh, you people are maybe not that aware of, but you've probably all been down to Depot Park, and you see the Depot Park now is closed temporarily, because through his department, the stream that goes through Depot Park is going to be all re reconstructed. reconstructed and uh, it's going to be a, a lot more usable and it's going to make it so much nicer for you. And then it's what they also have planned is putting in a little bridge between the skate park and the Depot Park. And it all comes out of his department and all that is we're basically off and running with that. It's just a great job, and, and uh, I know I appreciate it. Well, thank you. It's been remiss if I didn't say that I uh, appreciate the compliments, but I have a great staff and planning administration, very supportive. And we have a great team. <coughs> a great team. We've got to throw something out here. It's going to be it for you at the next council meeting. And the uh, Christman Mill. Yes. Crossing project. The uh, that was actually our first application that that we uh, submitted to VDOT, and we haven't started construction yet. But I remember standing here, Councilman Showalter, and you asked me. Uh, <laughs> oh, a, I remember. Is this a good direction? <laughs> oh, this is this a great direction? <laughs> no, good, good. good. <laughs> then continue on. <laughs> you said, "How much is this <coughs> project going to cost us?" Out out of pocket. And I said at the time, probably 200000 Well, I finally got the revised agreement in today by email. And we have people in Salem going to bat for us. Our out of pocket expense is only going to be 35000 on a $885,000. That's the name of that too. And that was VDOT working for us. They went to that. Maybe we shouldn't have been so hard. Yeah, that was not fair. Should have got that information. We should get. Yeah, we, we need that information. <laughs> that update's very. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you Anything else to add? Comments? Thank you. Uh, continuation. Yep. Continuation of the Christiansburg Town Council Christiansburg High School Government Partnership. Christiansburg High School will be represented by Finn Jennings and Rigal Patel. All um, right, what do you guess? Yes, sir. Can I, yeah, talk about this. I'm pleased to say that the partnership is starting on a good note. Uh, Mr. Patel was here a few weeks ago, and he's brought, and I haven't met him yet. What's, it, uh, what's Finn, your friend's name? Finn Jennings. Finn, okay, okay. And uh, you're the uh, senior representative. Yes. For the senior class president, or what are you? I'm just a representative. Represent, well, that's a good thing. Okay, but uh, we're pleased to have you here. And as you heard earlier, we got a situation where Mr. Sweet was discussing that we need a, a problem fixed for the young students. 
and I ask that, that you folks would take that back to the school and uh, work on that problem for us, if you wouldn't mind, okay? And, and report back to us next time, you know, as to what you've done on it. And uh, uh, you want to talk about what's going on at the school? Sure. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I'm Ruben Patel. I'm co-president of SGA. I live at 520-B Rainbow Street in Kirchner, Virginia. And what's going on at school right now, um, last Friday we had a successful Veterans Day parade and um, a nice luncheon with the veterans. It was all done by SGA. A couple we planned for, planned it for weeks and we stayed over, made um, signs, made everything. And, made the food, all that. It was really nice. I did a speech. Um, the other co-president, Nicole Doyora, also did a speech. All the veterans loved us. I'm pretty sure um, Mr. Bishop was also there. I'm pretty sure he enjoyed that. I do. I do. <laughs> and <clears throat> another thing, our um, cross-country boys team has made it three, third in states, and our cross-country women's team has made it eighth in states. So I feel like I should share that with you because it's Christian Berg and we're all their citizens Christianburg, and I've been told by Miss um, Robbins to tell you what's going on in Christianburg, and I feel like that's anything else. Yeah, that's that's great stuff to hear. The the wrestling wrestling season has started. Wrestling season has started. We're hoping for another state championship. <laughs> Basketball <laughs> schedule. Uh, what's the next event, or uh, what do they play next, or the wrestling? Um, you can find that on Christianburg High School website. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. Thanks, guys. Yes. Uh, before you leave, um, if Mr. Jennings could stand up back there. I just wanted to, uh, I don't know if uh, Regal didn't mention it, I'm surprised, but um, uh, Finn is actually our homecoming queen for the, our king. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, but uh, I also want to mention uh, Finn was part of the Christenberg soccer team, uh, U19 which is, this was the first year um, the soccer club has ever had a boys team over U15. And I think that's a huge accomplishment. He was actually part of that team. I sort of helped coach it. Um, I was the dope with the uh, clipboard most of the time. But uh, I would be remiss not to uh, say we had our final tournament this weekend and Mr. Jennings actually scored the winning goal. Oh, in good our deal. Game. So good stuff. thank you, Finn. But I appreciate you being here. And, I just want to, um, and then with you being here as part of the leadership of the senior class, one of the things uh, I think this is a great initiative council is taking, but I would like for you, and I mentioned this to Regal when he came, but I would like for you to continue uh, a conversation with the lower class on uh, what this initiative means to us or this program. And it's more than, and I appreciate you coming up and mentioning, hey, cross country team finished third. That's a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. for the Christian cross country team to finish that high or any sports team, well, wrestling always wins the uh, states, but uh, to continue um, uh, to try to evolve this program so that there's more input from uh, our, our students or our, our, uh, our young people at the high school age. So they feel like they have some input in council other than sitting here and just listening to us just ramble on for well, right now an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. But, Let's, I hope you and you're leaving. You and Regal are leaving, but I hope you guys set some sort of precedence so that this thing doesn't fall off. That this thing can continue to evolve and we get some input. Okay, sir. Thank and you. one last thing: if there's anything that you want us to help you with, please let us know. Of course. Okay. Seriously, yeah. I think what what I hope to hear not only is the uh, the success for athletic programs, but I really would like to know what's going on within the you know, within the clubs and drama and, the, and presentations that are coming up. A lot of things happen and we don't know about them until it's over. So, you know, on your, on your weekly reports to us or however how often you come, we'd really like to know what's going on at Christiansburg High School. Also on that note, our beta club, uh, thank you for reminding me, but our beta club is doing a Thanksgiving basket thing. And we intend to give many baskets to surrounding towns, this town, Blacksburg, Radford, they have asked us to make many baskets for them, and we've been working for hours on every day trying to make baskets, trying to collect food from Kroger. That we stand outside Kroger for two hours in the cold trying to collect food and all that. So I feel like that's a great project, and we'll see great. Yeah, that's, and that's, great. that's the things we want to hear. How would the baskets be given to? 
I mean, just anybody who gets a basket, or do you go to a certain folks, or? I'm not quite sure. That's right. Okay. okay. Beta. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Before you take a seat at the veteran, I want to thank you and the school for what y'all done for us. Because it's small things that makes us feel good. So thank you. It was a great day up there. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, guys. Anything else? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Your homework assignment is now given. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Test on Tuesday. Test on Tuesday. <clears throat> committee report, Trevor. Strict committee report recommendation on. <coughs> Plat of survey showing the subdivision of parcel 2A, tax parcel ID 436-6-2A, located at 100 Laurel Street for the Laurel Retail <coughs> Revival Development over <coughs> Kmart property, two parcels. Well, Mr. Well, Mr. Warren is pulling this up. This is the Kmart property uh, that's presently being redeveloped to host Hobby Lobby and this, um, this, is, this is for the Aldi, yes. I fully expect to see Mr. Sweet on the cover of Time Magazine one day. Really? <laughs> he will be. Thank you all. Thank you. I've got to start here. Don't okay. forget your jacket. The jacket. I said I took care of you all through high school. I heard that. 50 years later, <laughs> I got you again. See you, Aaron. See you, buddy. <laughs> Okay. Have you got that up, Andrew? Okay, so this sketch, you can see the existing Kmart with the uh, existing Kmart right there. And the, what's happening with this subdivision plat that we're hopefully approving tonight is down below that, Andrew, just run your mouse around the out parcel there. <clears throat> that out parcel is basically where the Kmart Garden Center is right now. It's being dem demolished right there. And <clears throat> there is going to be an easement continued through the property to ultimately connect to the adjacent property. But that's going to be in the parking area. But Aldi is going in. Sort of put your thumb over or the mouse over where Aldi is going in. The building itself is going in right there. So it'll be fronting North Franklin Street to the to the, uh, <coughs> to the south at the bottom of the sheet. So <clears throat> the simple subdivision request is one big parcel that they're carving this parcel out is to sell to Aldi, and the street <coughs> committee is reviewed. <coughs> It does meet our zoning ordinance, so I'll <clears throat> recommend, uh, the street committee recommends that uh, this plat be approved as presented, and that recommendation is made in the form of a motion. I second it. Motion and a second. Any discussion, <coughs> comments, questions? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hufford? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. This is 6A, thank you very much. Uh, number two is a plan of, of survey for street renaming and dedication slash vacation of central private easements in Oak Tree phases 11, 12, <coughs> and 13 on Pin Oak Drive and Twisted Oak Drive. Okay, these are the last uh, townhome blocks um, uh, that will complete the Oak Tree development, and council has already approved um, the the plats for this. However, there's a, uh, the two changes that are being requested that we need to approve tonight uh, are the renaming of Twisted Oak Drive. Um, I'm not sure what it was before. It was Pin Oak Drive. Oh, it was Pin Oak and Twisted Oak. Okay. So, that's, okay. so renaming of the street, but uh, probably more importantly, uh, the previous plan that council reviewed and approved had uh, alleyways behind the townhomes and now the hatched areas that uh, Mr. Warren's holding his mouse over right there. Um, the hatched areas uh, represent a similar pattern that's going on out there now where the, <clears throat> the, park, the cars access and park in the front of the property. And that's basically what we're approving tonight is a, a change in that. Instead of rear access, 
is going to have front access and be sort of like the rest of the town resort at this point. So that's basically it. Mr. Collins, did I leave anything out? That's right. <coughs> okay. So good. we're approving the renaming of the street and uh, the dedicated, uh, dedication of easements for uh, parking and, and uh, ingress and ingress. So the street committee recommends approval of the plat as presented, and I'll make that recommendation in the form of a motion. Yeah, I second it. Motion and a second. Any questions, comments? Thank you, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hubbard? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. 6 0. Thank you very much. Uh, item B, Finance Committee Report Recommendation on Budget Amendment 1 for Fiscal Year 2017 2018. Okay, you're. Uh, your agenda packet included a budget amendment. Uh, this budget amendment as a result of a lot of hard work uh, by Val, uh, and probably Mr. Wingfield, and probably others. Uh, your street or your finance committee met for three hours last week and vetted this thing um, very in, in thorough detail. And I'll just encourage you tonight. Uh, we're just encouraging you uh, to review that. If you have any questions, certainly feel free to ask Val uh, or one of us. Um, but we're not taking action on that this evening. Uh, it's uh, most of it is house cleaning items uh, that are typical from year to year with uh, projects that weren't completed last year and we're going to carry it over to next year and so forth. But uh, anyway, that information is in your packet and the Finance Committee uh, is in agreement, 100% agreement with everything that's in there. So what it, uh, for what it's worth, uh, we feel, feel comfortable that it's ready for Council's approval. And Mr. Scholar, would you like to add anything to that? No, I just if you if you would just take a moment. Ms. Tweedy actually did a oh, great yeah. summary uh, that's attached to, to to it, and if you take the time to actually read it, mm -hmm. um, it explains a lot of things. To you. One question, just a point of clarification for Ms. Tweedy, um, and I mentioned this to, to Mr. Wingfield as well. But under number seven, but at the for the farmers market salary plus fringe eight uh, for eight months of the year. That's only because we are um, obviously not going to have that position for the full 12 months, correct, for, for year one. It has nothing to do with whoever is hired in that particular position we just, that's been discussed or that's open right now uh, for application. They're not going to receive benefits for eight months of the year. It'll be a 12-month position, correct? Correct. Okay, that's just, just the savings. Just for the, because of the, yeah, we're right in the middle of it when we're doing the amendment. That's what I thought. I just want to thank you for clarifying that. And instead of, yeah, and I appreciate Mr. Hall bringing up. We could go into detail now, but it, I mean, it's, there's a lot of explanation in there. Yes. And but it's those type of items we are adding the full time position for events coordinator. Farmers market too. Mm -hmm. Farmers market. All over day. And you're hoping to have somebody there by the middle of January, is that what you're thinking? Yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah. The, the advertisement yeah. closes January eighth, so hopefully maybe by the end of January we would have somebody hired. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Tweedy. So this is our, our report. Do we need to vote on this or is this no, not or do it in two it. weeks? Public hearing, we can't vote. We have to have a public hearing on it. And we can vote at the end of the vote on it after the public hearing on the 28th. Very good. Thank, thank you. The, thank you, the members of the budget committee, for taking time to do that and bring that to our attention. It was an interesting night. It was a long yeah, good good success. It's good. And Mr. Mayor, before we go into discussion and action by Mayor and Council, uh, I failed. I, I sent an email earlier today about adding a potential item to the agenda about the Chamber of Commerce dinner. Mm -hmm. Uh, can we take that up uh, as an item as we head into discussion and action by Mayor and Council? Certainly. Okay. I that. <clears throat> so I'll make a motion and before we head into discussion and action by Mayor and Council, I'll make a motion that we add to the agenda a discussion of uh, <clears throat> town uh, support for the Chamber of Commerce dinner on December 7th, I believe. That's correct. Okay. And I'll uh, make a motion that we uh, add that to our agenda for discussion. I would second that motion. Got a motion in a second. Uh, as we can get into it, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Hubbard. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. Six zero. Thank you. So that will be C under discussion and action by Mayor and Council, uh, which happens to be part of the program we're in now. Uh, council action on a public hearing for a conditional use permit request by Elijah Bowen 
of Blue Ridge Motion LLC, agent for Kevin Carter, for a private recreational facility, Jim, at 492 Reading Road Southeast, Unit D, in the I-2 General Industrial District. The property was designated as business commercial in the future land use map of 2013, uh, Christiansburg uh, Comprehensive Plan. Public hearing was held on October the 24th, 2017. I think we do. That has been approved by the Planning Commission. Is that correct? It was, yes. yes. Okay. They, are, they recommended four conditions. Also, it's, is this council action on the CUP, not on the public hearing, correct? It's action on the public um, Conditional use. Yes. Yeah. Just public hearing this last council meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. We're ready to discuss, vote, and or. Can I request that the four conditions be read? Be no exercise, oh, no excessive <coughs> noise beyond yeah, okay. between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. The permit shall be subject to inspections and approval of the facilities and equipment by the fire marshal and building official. The town of Christiansburg requires that the applicant shall use and maintain the facilities and equipment in accordance with the equipment manufacturer's guidelines. The permit shall be subject to review by the Planning Commission in one year, and at a minimum, 10 parking spaces shall be reserved and posted for the private recreational facility only in substantial accordance with the conceptual parking plan dated October 27, 2017. <laughs> I think that was 6-0. Yeah, on the planning commission. Yeah, um, uh, one of the things that uh, we asked him to do was to explain to us uh, how you're going to park there and how we'll, you know, like get in and out and stuff, especially the uh, our younger children and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he explained all that. He actually met with staff out there and showed them and stuff. So, yeah, so he did everything that we asked him to do. Well, in light of the, uh, in light of the uh, uh, recommendation from the planning commission, which I think we all hold it. In that regard, I'll make a motion that we approve the CUP with the four conditions uh, as presented. I second it. The motion is second. Any discussion? I guess the only question I have, is there already another facility out there, a gym or a weight club or something? Did we yes. did we approve it? Really this is an addition. Okay. It is an addition, yes. Okay. Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Carter? Aye. Aye. Councilman Hubbard? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. 6-0, thank you. We have an updated application for annual support for community programs. Uh, Mr. Showalter, Mr. Tweedy, that was your baby, wasn't it? What was it? <laughs> uh, uh, the the application. Oh, yeah, okay. We, uh, well, we discussed it in Finance Committee. But it's your baby. So, uh, is there a copy in there? I, I'm yes, there is there. a copy in there. Okay. In the um, basically, we're just we're putting a little bit more um, strength to our grant application for, and, and folks, this is for people who come to us and ask for money uh, every year, uh, third party organizations. Um, years ago, when I first came on council, I always referred to the request as the old cocktail napkin request, where anybody could walk in and say, Hey, town manager, hey, town staff, can I get money? And there was no requirements for that. So uh, one of the first things I did on council was sort of meet with Miss Tweedy and, and staff at the time and see if we could get some sort of uh, formal application where we could actually vet these organizations who are asking for money. So it's been an ever-evolving uh, application. And, um, you know, one of the things that the town has to be diligent with taxpayer money. We just can't give it to anybody who wants to come in and request it. And, you know, we, what we're trying to do is, is, of course, we want to be there for organizations that need us, that actually put um, uh, some sweat equity into our community. Uh, that's what I think our taxpayer dollars uh, demand, is that we support organizations that have put back into our community. So we've added uh, several different um, uh, conditions to it. Uh, Val, do you want to? I can go over a couple of them, but primarily it's either cash match or volunteer match. So, um, and we value volunteer hours at twenty dollars an hour. So, for um, 
thousand dollars you have to match so many hours and volunteer hours for that or you can use the cash match from general funds that they have or from other grant funds just to show that there's other support and other fundraising and effort going into the project besides just the town fund right can I, let me ask you a question about that Mr. Wheaton my, the first thing my, my mind would go to and we have a lot of worthwhile organizations that we deal with and we, we, we provide money to because they provide such an invaluable service to us but I'm thinking, for instance, like the Children's Trust, your CAC, your Child Advocacy Center, uh, groups like that that would operate um, pursuant to a, again, a public charge. Of, for instance, on the CAC, that's your children who would be alleged to have been sexually molested or abused, and they would do forensic interviews there in a controlled environment. Um, how would that, with, 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 the, with the new programming, would that be in any way um, uh, make it more difficult for organizations such as that to request funds from the town? Or, so I think they have some ports from so many other resources yes. and other fundraising activities that would act as that match, um, I don't think it would create, uh, they would just have to provide more documentation that they have that. Okay. So that's the only Grant thing. money that they would receive <coughs> from another municipality from state would or as, a, as, a, as long as, as they're making other efforts to support <coughs> and not just coming to the town and asking for sure. dollars. Sure. They have to have support from other sources. <coughs> All right. um, yeah. The other requirement that we, there's a new format to it, which just the way that the application flows and how we want the application to come back is a little bit more consistent, so it's a formatting change. Pretty much the same questions. The other change is support for capital building improvements will only be awarded if the building is owned by the requesting organization. Um, and then requests for disbursement, you have to provide the documentation before the disbursement of funds will be made. And the, the request has to be made by May the 15th of the fiscal year, before the fiscal year ends. Um, failure to make the request by the 15th of May will negate us by June 30th. I have a question on that part of it. As done on by the person requesting, if someone has a lease, say a hundred year lease, is that considered considered as owning the building? Good no. question. Well, it's not. So this could eliminate people that's trying to do work on buildings that they actually don't own in their name. Right. Okay. The grant application still supports programming, but um, uh, at least the finance committee did not feel that it was in the town's taxpayer interest that anybody leasing a property um, that they could fix up a building for a landlord then be of course uh, go defunct or move away and that landlord whether it be you know somebody who's lives in Christiansburg or a lot of our landlords who live away that you know taxpayer funds were used to improve that building well I guess mainly what I was referring to not land I know what you're saying but I guess I'm used to the community center for the town that's owned by the church, not owned by the community center. So the church has to make the the community center. I mean, church. They the church owns the agent. Not, for. Well, I mean, the church can apply for the funds for the community center. But I didn't think we gave money to <clears throat> churches. We will call church, do. We I don't will. think we do. No, That's what I'm saying. We've never. Well, that doesn't so, mean we can't. But. That's a dangerous precedent yeah. that you're stating because there's a you know there's churches we have in downtown Christiansburg that are on the National Historic. That's my point. Uh, but the whole key with this is um, I guess you're looking at the community center. Um, they lease the property from the church, so that's one example, Sam. Uh, we can look if if we did not have this condition in there, any organization could be leasing property anywhere in town and request that those funds be used to fix up a building that they don't own and that, that they could be either kicked out of in a year and our taxpayer dollars were used to fix up that property. Okay. So I know you're, you're putting in that one condition, but we also have programs coming out next year where in downtown, and I believe the community center falls within our Cambria, district where, Andrew, you're putting that together where they could request facade grants, much like Salem's doing. So there's a lot of programs out there, but 
I think that this certain condition, I mean, the Schaefer Memorial could deed that property, over, uh, the community center over uh, to that organization. They could do that and separate it from the church. <clears throat> that is an option for them. Okay. Or, they, or the community center can come directly to us and request those funds not through our grant application process. Even though that's, that's what we decided where we want to funnel all requests. If you can't keep them quiet, get them out. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. I don't think that does there take any any approval or any action on this? I don't think so. This is a review of. Is that correct? Are we voting to accept the new grant? Probably need an approval because I need to publish down the website so that we can start making applications for the next fiscal budget cycle with the full amount due February first. Well, I would, I'll make a motion that uh, that we stay this until the next meeting since we have some questions so we can have further discussion and that we can vet any potential concerns we have and ask for it to be placed in the second meeting of November for, uh, for voting. Okay. Yeah, I'll make that in a formal motion. Okay. Is there a second? I do. Yeah. Motion in the second. Uh, any discussion? We're, not, we're just not going to take any action. On we're just not taking any action. All right. So we're tabling, right? right. Very good. Uh, item C is the uh, support of the annual Chamber of Commerce dinner. Uh, I just asked briefly uh, some uh, question about whether the town should uh, pay for a table at the Chamber of Commerce, which I personally have no problem supporting. Uh, so long, you know, as long as we we decide as a council that's what we want to do, and uh, another council member brought up another organization. <coughs> We'll okay, Mr. Bishop, uh, so, so a few of us attended the uh, NAACP's Freedom Fund uh, banquet uh, on October 7th, I believe. It was, it was last month. <clears throat> and that, that's just another example of, of organizations and that we can choose to support. So I, I just ask that be added to the agenda so that we can decide <clears throat> if we do this, and then we should also consider others as well and on a case-by-case -case basis decide. Uh, you know, instead of just because we've always done it or haven't done it, doesn't mean I just think when we're spending that kind of money uh, that we should just decide as a group if we want to do that because we're the ones that are accountable to the citizens about how we spend our tax dollars. No, I'm glad you all brought it up. I mean, the, when I when I was looking at it and trying to get an idea as to what the costs were, um, I think you know, we are stewards of the, of the public dollars, That's right. and we are accountable. And, and again, I. It's not about being a worthwhile organization. Obviously, they use the money um, from these events to funnel back into programs and, and support for, uh, for members of our public. But, for instance, the Chambers of Commerce Dinner the table was $750 for a table. I think that includes the tickets. It includes too. tickets. And so, I just that when, when we looked at numbers such as that, um, that's what, again, kind of gave me pause. And, and again, I'm not picking and choosing organizations. That's, that's beside the point. I'm looking at it from a dollar's perspective. And, and, and frankly, is there a utility that would justify the expenditure of those amounts of public funds? I guess if, uh, obviously, that would be for staff, it could, could be council, it could be for the mayor, and whomever, but uh, um, non-entities would be paying their own way, I take it. So, obviously, spouses, people like that, I would think. Yeah. Uh, well, that I would imagine. In, but in the past, we have, for the Chamber of Commerce and yeah. other events, we have, we, we have paid for the, for the council tickets as representatives of the town at this event and uh you know if spouse goes right the, you know a payer leans sure that i think i would report my, my, my only thing was that the, the cost i mean you're talking of potentially yearly thousands and, and thousands of dollars for tables and i just i you know i have an issue with that unless we kind of see it all and see what the total figure is i'd be interested to know what we've been spending in a 12-year period 12 months period just curious sam how much was a table at the NAACP. They could have got a community, what they call a community table, for six hundred dollars. In the town of Blacksburg, this is yeah, that's what Blacksburg does. That, that it was sort of nice to see a whole view of the town had a table there. Right. Um, most of the council members. Were there. Did that include the ticket? The right. the, the ticket. So I, I just you know <clears throat> I I'd seen the conversation that's get started. Yes, we should be stewards. I mean that's you've heard me say that just a little bit earlier here. But when you see other municipalities attending these 
organizations that are very important to our community. Um, and presidents, we would only just buy tickets and be put wherever, but there was no representation from the town of Christiansburg. And as you heard Mr. Seitz said, there was a table of Blacksburg. Uh, well, just solely by same. Blacksburg, and that shows a commitment, and you do <clears> learn <throat> something from these organizations. So if we need to have further conversations, whether we want to, and even get a um, total amount, how, how much it would cost us during the year, I would like to see that, <clears> because <throat> I would like to see Christenberg sort of have a seat at the table at these. Uh, well, I think you're talking about instead of being ad hoc, it'd be actually a line item, correct? correct. Budget line item. Uh, well, I mean, in, in the council, I mean, we would need to see it. Of course, we need to approve it, approve yeah, it's it in the council. budget. But I think that, um, you know, in precedent, we always would just buy a ticket and, or right. each one of us or yeah. if we took our spouse. But there would be no res reserve table. And I think that speaks volume about us when we attend things like the chamber and the NAACP that, that the town of Christianburg has. We want we want to be a partner uh, in with them in our community. That's the way I see it. I mean, um, yeah. but I would like to get a total cost um, uh, budget for 2018-19 and uh, if we deem it, you know, make a reservation to support I, I these I tend to get most of those requests that come across my desk <clears throat> for the most part. So, all right. Um, but they, they hand out awards at these and, and make records. They're, they're lots of business of the year right. and, and mm -hmm. you know, this type of thing. It's a pretty big, I mean, this, this probably, Brad, you've been to them, what, 1,200 people or better there? I've been, and I'm not planning to go this year, and I, I fully support us supporting the chamber. Don't get me wrong. One of my point in asking that to be added is I think it deserves council action, mm -hmm. and I'd likewise like to consider other opportunities when they come about like the freedom fund that came about last month we didn't discuss that right. and so that's that was my only point i'm not again you know i support the chamber i'm not i'm not planning on attending this year and i have no problem supporting it but i think we should decide that that's what, what we're going to do and then we should also entertain lots of similar, <coughs> uh, similar activities for nonprofits. Uh, same way, so. I agree. I agree with Brad saying. I think that if you make it a budget item, that we have a figure, gives taxpayers an opportunity to uh, be we're transparent with that expenditure. It's very clear. It's in the it's in the budget. I think that uh, is important. That's what it's I don't, simple to do. Mm -hmm. Steve, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't think that we need to uh, um, support these tables that cost six to eight hundred dollars. I think there's a better way to spend town money and another point where is it going to stop if you support one thing then you have to support another one and there you just can continue going on That's what now, if, find if, there's, if there's one person like I would not uh, hesitate that to, we have the mayor uh, present at some of these things and we could uh, you know uh, support your, your, your whatever your bill is for that but I think there are other ways that the town can be represented in other things. And I'm sure I'm not trying to cut down the, the chamber or I'm trying not to cut down anything else, but I, I think there's just a, a restriction on that and I think that we can uh, do it in another way. I, I, I think you missed the point, Mr. Huppert, in the fact that it is, you know, I think the majority of the council may feel that the representation as a group at a table is important to show our support <clears throat> rather than to just be stuck one over here and two over here it's the fact that we support i think last year is the first year we ever purchased a, a table uh at the chamber then and that figures i think 750 dollars it covers your it covers the cost of admission for the 10 people at the table uh those that are not members of council or those that are stay are, are spouses or guests of employee of our employees, you know, they reimburse the town. Uh, I personally would like to see us for this year go ahead and rent the table or, or commit to the table. Uh, I, I, one of the things I needed to know tonight is how many members on council want to go to the chamber. Yeah. I mean, I understand what what you're saying, and it's a very good point. But I also understand that there has to be some restrictions and and um, I, ju I just think there's a, a, a better way to do things and a better way to show 
uh, our support of the uh, uh, chamber. I mean, maybe to go some of these more these first Friday things or different other things like that. Uh, what would be a better way to do? Mr. What, what is uh, uh, we we support the chamber quite a bit, not monetarily, but mm -hmm. you know with the seat on the board of directors and these type things with the liaisons. I mean, what 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 would show better support of the chamber on this annual event, which is their gala. This is their this is their prom. Yeah, I'm not trying to fight you, and I'm not fighting well, anybody else. You're doing a pretty good job of it. <laughs> if the rest of the, the rest of the uh, council wanted to go that way, I would you know, support them. But I'm just sort of expressing my opinion. I'll go ahead and make a motion. Let's go ahead and vote. Let's put something out there. I'll make a motion. We support the chamber dinner for one table for ten people uh, this, year. this year. And then we can, I mean, if there's a difference of opinion, let's just throw it out there. And I'll go ahead and make a motion. My point was not to uh, uh, throw a wet blanket on it, but rather just for us to discuss it and decide and then and have similar discussions for other opportunities. So I'll go ahead and make a motion that we approve uh, the per or the <clears throat> whatever purchase or reserve sponsorship the sponsorship of one table for uh, for uh, council and department heads and, and whatever and yeah. then any spouses are extra mm -hmm. or any significant others are extra are extra so I'll put that up in motion I'll second it to get it on the table Thank you. All right. Matter of fact, we need to. Can we, we still talk about this? <laughs> yeah, we can talk about it. Does anybody? You got any more questions, comments? We got a motion and a second. All right, let's make. You know, we got to be aware of the perception that it's, we, as counselors, may be throwing out. I mean, that's my personal opinion. Say again? Perception. Perception that we're. That we're picking and choosing which events we're going to. Oh, I think we should pick and choose. I mean. Yeah, okay, but we should still. Well, I grant it. That's my point. I think we should pick and choose, and we should own it. Okay, so we're going to start with this tonight. So next year, I'll, I'll tell you right now, next year I'll support us doing the same okay. thing at Freedom Fund. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <clears throat> just go on and, the record. And, and, and I go on do, the record and say that. We do support the... Uh, well, I'm not a member, but I just think we don't want well, to I understand that, but message you, out. You, know, you also have to understand that we do support the uh, Community Forum on Race Relations <clears throat> at $500 a year or okay. better. So, well, all right, so we have a motion and a second. Henry? I just, I, I will be supporting this this year. I do. There was a conversation um, for the freedom table uh, that we had, and we fell back on precedent that yeah, we, I think we it only get. <coughs> uh, but I'm supporting this this year in hopes that next year we will um, reserve in our budget. And I'm going to leave it to Mike to come up with that, and we can. You know, just one more item we talked talk about during the during the budget session is, you know, what is this special fund going to go for? But I am going to expect that to be in, and I'm on the finance committee, so I'll be asking about it to make sure. And folks, I don't think there's going to be 20 organizations that we're renting tables to, yeah. um, or 20 galas. Um, these are these are major players in our community, like the NAACP and and the uh, chamber that. Um, I think that the town showing um, up and sitting at a table, whether all members on this uh, council can make it or not, but just a, you learn a lot when you're there, and uh, it shows great support, uh, support for them. So my only concern, uh, Henry, is that uh, it is piecemeal at this mm -hmm. point because we don't have a either a policy that we follow or an amount in which that uh, we're looking at spending over a fiscal year. And so we just might say today that we're not going to have 20 of these, but I don't know if we're going to get 40 if we're going to be doing this. So how many requests we get, or if it's going to be two, I, I don't know, but I have hesitation with that, but that would be the extent of my hesitation. <clears throat> and Mr. Bishop, I want to, while we're being, you did, you did aptly note that we did discuss this and we didn't. I'll tell you where I changed my mind, or what influenced me heavily on this was going to this last one and seeing another locality with some full table, and I thought, man, that's nice. And they've been doing it forever. But I didn't know that. I hadn't seen them there like that, and that made an impression on me. And that's that's why I'm, that's why I think that that before I thought it was an individual thing, and when I saw that, I was like, no, we need to be there as a, as a team. 
Yeah. And so, Mr. Mayor, on the table, is it approved? If, if we mm -hmm. vote to yay, we are approving tonight. the expenditure tonight of, of seven fifty four to purchase the table at the Chamber of Commerce dinner in December. Sponsor table, yes, sir. That's That's correct. Correct. And that includes the tickets so of those attending, and any spouses or guests yes, will reimburse the, the will reimburse the table. And if we don't approve this, then next year we we'll, should we stop? We have the same discussion with you know another group. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll budget for it. We'll, we'll have that pre-discussion so that. that we have a budget line item. I, I can honestly say my four years as mayor, I have only seen these two requests come across for table sponsorship. Now, I'll have to dig back and see and Val can probably double check me on it as she normally does. But I, those are the two that seem to, seem to be the ones that we act on or attend. The only other thing I can think of is potentially the amount. Via mail. Table. Mm -hmm. it, but those aren't usually tables. Those are different, different right. events. Right. Those go to the via mail conference. Those are the only other ones that I can think of that you participated in. All right. So we have motion and a second. Mm -hmm. uh, any more discussion? Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop? No. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? No. Councilman Huppert? No. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. There's 3-3. Three, three. I will break the tie with an aye vote. <clears throat> Staff reports. Town manager. Uh, Mr. Nelson pointed out the uh, public input meeting for the North Franklin Street uh, corridor and Cambridge Street intersection project is Thursday, 6 to 8. Also, I'd like to bring up the December 26th council meeting. What would you potentially have? Uh, I guess that would be a holiday. Uh, basically, Christmas Day would be Monday, and we would get Christmas Day and Christmas Eve off, so we'd take Monday and Tuesday as a holiday. Care to I was going to ask you. I, I I think that we've got a lot going on right now, and I'd like to have the two meetings in December. We we I, I, I'm I won't be here on the 26th. That's a holiday, and I'm not going to leave my family the day after Christmas to come to this meeting. So if we could do it the second and third of Tuesdays of December, I think makes more sense. Which would be the 12th and the night. Am I wrong? 19th. I, I I think last year was the first year we we forego our second meeting. Um, we, we've uh, I guess I would rather leave it to staff. Do we have to have two meetings? Uh, last year we made off one. If we need to do a couple of work sessions, I'd be on board with that. But I think that we I said we got a lot going on right now. We like. can always call a special meeting. The, what is it? Twelve, three days in advance, five days in advance. Over the holidays, if you yeah, but it's gonna be awful hard to schedule that. I know. The twelfth is the the first. Well, the second Tuesday, the mm -hmm. uh, third Tuesday is the nineteenth. That's right. 12th and 19th. We can reschedule the 26th and 19th, and we've got two meetings in the day. But do we have enough to during that time? <coughs> if not, you're going to be, you're gonna have new member of council, you're going to overwhelm. It's going to be three and a half to four, what, five weeks of information coming up on the first uh, organizational meeting council. So what about we go to the first meeting in December and you tell us, oh, uh, Randy, how it looks, the docket looks, or the agenda looks, and if we could, then then we'll we'll do another one. Another I, I one think we need clear direction. We either need to cancel it the, for the 26th with the direction that we will, if it need be, we still have uh, a few days after the Christmas holidays, or in the in the few days prior to, that we can schedule a meeting if need be. We can always call a meeting. I'm, I'm going to vote thumbs down on it. We, when we do the VML, typically before we switch our meetings to the second and fourth, if we stayed with the first and third, this wouldn't have been an issue when we switched to second and fourth. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm fine with the second and fourth. But when we did the first and third, then VML fell, fell on that week too. Almost invariably, we had, had that conflict. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to stay here till 11 o'clock on the first meeting if we need to. Uh, so I would vote to cancel our second meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll back that second. Same thing here. Same. Same. So the, the, 
head shake and nod is either 6-0 or 5-1. We're not sure which Oh, it'd be, a, it'd be a firm 5-1. <laughs> well, you're not going to hear any of the differences. <laughs> well, but, uh, but, I, but I, 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 again, uh, majority rules, and I can accept that. Thank We're you. good. I would like, if, you know, I know we'll stay here as late as we can, which is 11 o'clock uh, per code, but if there's something we can't handle and we have to set up a meeting, yeah, I'm okay. I think yeah, the door, if there's emergency, I don't want to say we're shutting that door because I, 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 yeah, I so anticipate. If y'all really think that you're going to be able to get at a, at a three day notice over the Christmas holiday, all six people here in the mayor, I, you're crazy. Hey, you're gonna, hey, if you're going to schedule, you're going to schedule. I'm going to put it on there uh, the weekend before the holiday, Christmas. You're not going to get any meeting that no, for 10 days. You're not. So it's either going to advise us on, that, on our first meeting whether, hey, this is very important. We need to have a special meeting on this, and we can schedule that. <clears> we have the 19th, 20th, we still have 21st. Time. On, once we post the notice, and what is the formal notice on this? Is it three, three days? days. Three, three days, days public <clears throat> notice of, of a council meeting? Yes. Okay. Very good. What else now? Uh, just uh, like to recognize that Karen Walters will be retiring from the town. Uh, December 1st will be her last day. She's got 30 years experience with the town. She's a human resources specialist, and I'll just point that out. Anytime any employees retire from the town, I'll try to point it out to you. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Madam Attorney? I have nothing, thanks. Other staff? Very good. Council reports. Okay, Mr. Hall. Um, two things real quickly. Number one, I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Hufford, Mr. Stipes, and uh, yourself, Mr. Mayor, uh, for your re-elections. Um, and um, uh, I'm sure that's a bit of a load off and a weight off, and uh, we can reestablish our, our focus, and uh, I know that takes up a considerable amount of time, but uh, again, congratulate both of you, and I appreciate your uh, makes one realize how much they hate election day. Yeah, no, you say, <laughs> but I but I appreciate your commitment to uh, all three of you and all of us on here for the commitment to the town. Um, the last meeting we had at the uh, recreation center happened on the first uh, Monday of November. Anybody that's present, we'd love to have you in December. We have one more that I'm going to be at, and uh, but a lot of neat little things happen. You know, we talk a lot about the program, senior programs. Talk a lot about uh, programs for young people as well. There's a lot of offerings there that um, I think a lot of people just maybe aren't aware of. Um, but one thing that came out that I wanted to share with each of you uh, is that uh, this past meeting, aside from, again, you know, some great uh, screenings, again, we had, I mean, there was over 200 people at a particular screening, health screening. There's a lot of public safety and public health type of um, awareness that takes place at the Ray Jones Ray Grace Center and the Aquatic Center. Um, but uh, specifically speaking, the um, Baseball, for a long time, you've heard of Dixie Youth. That's what's been kind of a staple here in the town. And there will be some changes in regards to some of the age groups with the sanctioning body. Might not mean a lot to some of you, but it, it does have a large effect on uh, members of the uh, town. And we have a very energetic and, if you will, youthful presence uh, uh, at um, state and local and national level with our uh, youth baseball teams and softball. There's both. And um, so that's coming soon. Uh, there'll be some more information I can provide, but they'll likely be changing that sanctioning body over due to some events that transpired last year where we couldn't get um, information in a timely fashion that we needed. I trust Brad and the staff there that have uh, thoroughly vetted this process. We have a member of the Recreation Commission who is also a, uh, a longtime umpire and very familiar with the different bylaws of the different organizations. And after hearing the presentation at the last meeting, it's a fantastic idea, very supportive. Uh, of the youth, and that was the priority. What supports our youth best? Not anything else, not about relationships and who do we like the most, it's about what supports our youth, and that was the primary indicator that uh, Brad drew upon, and so that's why we're moving in that direction. That will be all I have to report this evening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bishop? Yeah, this past Sunday, there was a Veterans Day program held at Schaefer Memorial Baptist Church, and I want to thank the council members and TAF staff members who came out to support that program. Yeah. Mr. Collins? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the thing that I, I came with, I, I got some new information on the, the Virginia the Main Street program, and I want to send you all out the, the same email I got tomorrow. And I appreciate everybody looking at this and see if we want to uh, see what it's all about. Okay. okay. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Stipes? I have nothing more important than so Congratulations to Mr. Hubbard and Mr. Barber <clears throat> on their successful uh, campaigns. Show off. Yeah, uh, I'll just talk about the regional commission. Uh, we do have a meeting this Thursday. It's our Thanksgiving meeting. So uh, all council members or 
anybody wish to uh, in the general public wish to show up but uh, of course the regional commission is How comprised much table cost? it's zero <laughs> the, it's actually <laughs> three, so, uh, and it, it'll be a short meeting <clears throat> unlike tonight uh, but um, yeah it's not over that's why uh, but it's always interesting you have your representatives from um, our neighboring municipalities to show up and of course uh, Kevin Bird the director um, it's always an educational experience for me and you get to meet your neighbors uh, uh, like the leaders from there so if anybody wants to show up it's Thursday at 6 at the competitive center out in Fairlawn but our last meeting uh, we have two members who are leaving um, uh, Blacksburg Cecile Newcomb who's a long-term serving uh, council member of Blacksburg uh, she did not seek re-election in Blacksburg and I've known Cecile for a long time she's a great asset um, and also Kevin Sullivan from the Virginia Tech Foundation who's who was one of our initial um, members from an education institution which uh, a few years ago your regional commission not only to all the municipalities uh, in our area but we added uh, Virginia Tech Rafford and most recently New River so Kevin was initially part of that process and he actually served as chair for a couple terms uh, an incredible person he's moving to VCU to take a new position and he's going to, you know we're going to miss him because he's he's entertaining uh, that is definitely one but he's also very educated he's very passionate about our area you know of course Virginia Tech because he works there but he's very passionate he really helped the regional commission along with Kevin Bird sort of move forward out of um, our decade and decade um, sort of in the middle ages um, we did have the uh, small business uh, development corporation uh, stop by and talk to us a um, couple things I'll just touch on it uh, on with them uh, they have um, many offices I think 28 is the notes I have down here but the most important thing they do they just don't help uh, entrepreneurs start um, they build relationships with people who currently have businesses in our area um, but one of the main things they do, um, they, they help small businesses starting and even current businesses access capital, create jobs, um, and they build a long-term uh, you know, relationships with them. Um, they help them get funds, and really what it all boils down to, for every dollar invested in the um, uh, business um, development court uh, by any entity, your municipalities, a lot of them invest in that. But typically, three dollars are generated from it. I do want to thank Andrew and um, <clears throat> Randy for showing up um, to that that meeting. Uh, that meant a lot. Everybody noticed it in there um, that you showed up um, uh, for their presentation and to be part of that. And it meant a lot to us. Uh, our Harry Collins serves on as well, and Hill Hill Johnson, who was here earlier, serves on it. But it meant a lot that you came out there. You took took time to find out more about this organization, which will. You know the town's going to start uh, sort of partnering with to help our, uh, you know, our entrepreneurs and our existing small businesses, which we're going to hear more about in the holiday season. But it's appreciated. Yeah, got Thank a, you. Class is scheduled at the rec center now. Yes. with them. That's yes. good. Mm -hmm. I'll just follow up with that. I was going to point out the classes we've got at the rec center. Also, I think they may want to come to council just to make a presentation to um, maybe in January. Is what I was thinking. Okay. A few other, I guess, pending items, if I could. could uh, Blacksburg Transit would like to come to make a presentation. We were hoping to maybe do that November 28th, if possible. Just put on the 19th of June. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I would like. I'm just kidding. Is that acceptable? It's a work session. We can do a presentation. So, so yeah, on the Blacksburg Transit work session on the 28th. A work session? Work session. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, November the 28th? Or? Yes. Um, what, what it, is this transit as a work session? Yes. Uh, well, they need a work session. Uh, Would you rather put it off for the new council member? Do what? <coughs> we, no, we need a work session because I want to meet with council and to go over some of these committees and commissions that we're appointing to. And I've sent the memos out, but I, I think we need to have a work session and I, at, at, at a point. Now, can we do it 5.30 to 6.30, 5.30 to 6? I don't know. I was, I'm, I'm available 28th if you all want to come in early. Uh, my 
Mike, do, do we do the organizational meeting um, in the first December meeting as a work session? Oh, that's, that, part of, that part of it's fine. That's, I mean, I, I just, before oh, I, I close the year and make my assignments, I want, I want input from you all. Because there's some committees that will be affected. Uh, and the, mayor, the mayor and I sit on the transit um, um, board, um, what is it, uh, advisory board. Um, and if we all remember uh, our other work sessions, and I suggested a work session because typically in a formal session like this, we give an organization 15 minutes, and that's not enough time because in tradition, council spends probably two Question. hours uh, questioning BT on expenses, on routes, and things like that that they have to explain to us, and there's no way in a formal session we're going to get through it here, okay? So I suggest that. Um, and I know that we're not going to be able to take on too much if it's a work session before council, and that's why I'd like to do the organization the first weekend, that's fine. Uh, the December. first meeting in December. But I think it's important because we all have questions about transit. We always do, and that's that's fine. Sure. And they anticipate that. Um, and it takes what two hours? I think our last work session with them was, or an hour and a half. So. So we're talking about the 28th of November. Yeah. Probably, so can we come in at 5:30, yeah. 6:45? Yeah, that sounds good. We can yeah. do that. Uh, I'm is that enough time? We were thinking probably about an hour and a half. Yeah. So uh, you get five thirty. Three, three things I think we want to talk about were ridership, routing, and I guess particularly a new route for the Explorer route, and funding. Mm -hmm. And funding. Yeah. And funding. So the, well, there are there are proposed five? changes to next year's funding. Why would we not wait for a new council member for such a big decision? We, we can't. Well, I don't think we're going to make a decision. We're going to get, you know, Marissa should, should, should be here anyway. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine with that, but I, I would encourage that at least, at the new council member elect is invited and hopefully she can attend. I'm 100% I'm, I'm fine with that's that. That's a good point. I'll, I'll take care of that. We'll take care of that. I uh, think this is I, a pre Am I writing down 5.30 on the 28th, or are we going to go to normal? Yeah, what have I done? Well, we haven't done anything yet tonight, Steve. Probably. Well, I want to know. Anything well, I need to put on her shoulders, but I think you make a good point. Because basically yeah. what this meeting is, it's a preemptive to the budget. I'm fine. 5.30 on the 28th. Good. 5.30 on the 28th. Okay. I, I will mention that also, since... Uh, no, go ahead, Steve. I, I'll, I'll finish. Any I'll, you got something else? We said 5.30 on the 28th. That's all I hear. Randy was in the middle of 5.30 on the 28th. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw these out quickly, and I think these are all January work sessions. North Christiansburg Regional Park, uh, Lisa Blickley from Tourism Development Council, <clears throat> Wayfinding Signage, uh, FOIA Conflict of Interest, Closed Meetings, and that type of work session, and also the Small Business Development Council. I think all those are perfect for after the end of the year, except I, I so to get old, hardly support the those. Christenberg uh, North Regional Park. Um, I mean, we can do it at the end of the year if you want to, um, but uh, that's something I think will be best taken up before the 31st, and then because you're going to have multiple meetings on that over the next six to eight months anyway. But uh, but other than that, the other items I think uh, very perfect for the January one and beyond. We'll work on those. Randy, we'll sit down tomorrow. Mr. Tucker. Uh, the only thing I have to say is I want to uh, just uh, wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and go Hokies. All right, way to finish on a positive note tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, will, I will say on the 12th is uh, for Mr. Hopper and Mr. Stocks. That is a swearing in ceremony. Eric right. Williams is going to come over. I've already. She'll be here about 10 minutes after 7, uh, after we get through the initial first part of the meeting. We'll go from that point. Um, I don't think I had anything else really major. No. Uh, I think it's got, if not, I'll email you. How's that? Of course. All right. I think we are getting ready to go into a Yes, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, do we have any food around here anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's a big old bag of Fritos downstairs. We're like, mm, snack. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I'd like to make a request for a closed meeting under Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711A1 for the discussion, consideration, or the interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of a specific public officer, appointees, or employees of any public office. The closed meeting is, meeting is in reference to the town manager position. I second that. Thank you. Motion and a second. Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Hopper. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stites. Aye. The 6 0. We are in closed <coughs> session. We will recess for three minutes. Three full minutes. Thank you. 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 Yes, sir. <laughs> Councilman Bishop? Aye. Councilman Collins? Aye. Councilman Hall? Aye. Councilman Hubbard? Aye. Councilman Showalter? Aye. Councilman Stipes? Aye. Are we in certification? Aye. Yes. I move to certify that the town council of the town of Christian Mercury in closed meeting in the best of each member's knowledge discuss only public business matters lawfully exempt from open meeting requirements by Virginia law and only such matters are as are identified in the resolution to end to close the meeting. And I guess that's a formal motion. It is a motion. Second. <laughs> motion and a second. Madam Clark. Yes, sir. Councilman Bishop. Aye. Councilman Collins. Aye. Councilman Hall. Aye. Councilman Hufford. Aye. Councilman Showalter. Aye. Councilman Stipes. Aye. Uh, council action on the matter. We have by majority decided to uh, Continue the town manager search with Springstead Waters at an annual pro at a figure of nineteen thousand five hundred dollars. Well, I got a motion. Huh? We don't take a motion. Don't you don't have to. Okay. Right? I mean, we we'll agreed to this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Adjourn, we, we well, I'm just waiting. The vote takes still over twenty minutes. <laughs> Anything else to come before council? No. Thank you.